Hey, what's going on, guys? Okay, so thank you for coming back to another broadcast at the Ellis Network. We have a few things that I want to talk to you guys, or I have a few things I want to talk to you guys about, not we. Um, earlier today, I made a post about November 4th. For some of you guys that are my subscribers that are on my Facebook, my my YouTube Facebook, um, I made a post talking about Antifa and want to talk about the possibility of a nationwide blackout. I know most of you guys have heard about this. It's not being pushed out mainstream. And we'll get into the reason why once I get into that subject. But we're going to talk about Antifa first. Um, here on social media, most of us do know that Antifa, which is the anti-fascist group, that's what they like to call themselves, um... They've been protesting and causing havoc around the nation. You know, anything to do fighting against President Trump or Pence. Um, you know, and you got the LGBT community, Black Lives Matter, Antifa. I mean, granted, they're not their, you know, their own, they're, they are their own separate entity. But they all pretty much, I mean, come on. Uh, let's be honest here, guys. Alright, so anyways... I found this out about a month ago, and I wasn't going to bring it out, I wasn't going to talk about it, because, you know, it's it's something out of a fairy tale. I mean, we do know that these kind of things do happen in society, but here in America, I would have just never thought we would be there. I don't think I would, I, I never thought I would see that. Um, and here we are, you know, the fairy tale image of a civil war breaking out in America is actually really real. It's being talked about everywhere whether or not you're at alternative news sources you're getting your news from google yahoo cnn fox you know c-span anywhere that you can get your news from it's in there and they're all saying pretty much the same thing now again you guys know how i do anything that i'm bringing to you guys i try to bring the facts to you guys so i'll post the links in the articles in the of the articles in the description and you guys can read them um, and then come up with your own opinion. Again, I'm right now I'm looking at refusefascism.org. I believe that's Antifa's home webpage. And, you know, regarding November 4th, here, I'm going to move you guys over here so I can see my screen a little bit. I got you guys propped up against my screen on my laptop. Um, November 4th, they're calling for the start of the end. Um, it's being talked about, you know, civil war. And I'm seeing from both sides, you know, if Antifa actually shows up November 4th and actually starts protesting, you know, I see a lot of the alternative right groups, you know, feeding, you know, feeding hate with hate. So basically, you know, there's that idea. Now, people, you know, they don't, for the ones that really have not paid attention or don't really know what's going on with the idea, let me shed some light on to, um, to the idea for you guys. Um, again, this is from RefuseFascism.org. I believe it's Antifa's main webpage. On Facebook, they have 37.2 thousand followers. Um, it has a share button for Twitter, but Twitter's not showing us how many shares it has or tweets or hashtags. Um, so I mean, that's just on Facebook alone. Now, we do have Twitter, um, Instagram, you know, Snapchat. And there's another, there, there's multiple different social media outlet groups out there. Everyone just thinks of, you know, Facebook or Twitter or, you know, the real mainstream to the public. But there's also social networking apps like, um, there's one called MeWe. You can download it on your phone. It's just like Facebook. However, it's less um, censored, I should say. Most of you guys know that Facebook the last, you know, two months has been running a very heavy campaign on censoring, um, they, everything, you know, so, you can only imagine how many people that this has reached out, plus, again, like I said, it's being talked pretty mainstream, you know, this is not being a secret, this is not being hush-hush, they're, they're saying, come November 4th, it's the beginning of the end, a lot of people, again, like I said, talked about maybe civil war, um, this is what it says on their page, the end of the Trump Pence regime. And again, whether or not they are going to protest, um, we'll read this and we'll get a little bit into it. Um, 
And it states, you know, from the call for November 4th, we will gather in the streets and public squares of cities and towns across this country. At first, many thousands declaring that this whole regime is illegitimate and that we will not stop until the single demand is met. This nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. Now, when we seen Antifa, you know, and there's plenty of video of the protesting and the rioting and, you know, the, hi, I'm comrade, blah, blah, blah. We've, we've seen this stuff. All right, now, we know from the past, you know, Antifa's one of the violent groups that's out there protesting. And and don't get me wrong, I, I, I do truly believe that there's going to be people in this movement that don't want to cause no problems, that just want to be there for the support. But, like, every protest you have, you know, especially when it's going against the grain, you're going to have some agitators. Um, but the agitators are the ones that's being showcased the most, again, black uh, bad cops, you know, that's being put out the mainstream media is painting the picture of all of them bad. Again, I don't agree with Antifa. I do not agree one bit. I believe that there's another way to do this. Everything that they stand up for is basically everything that they are. You know, talking about calling the kettle black here. Um, but anyways, the, the statement goes on. Our protest must grow day after day and night after night. Thousands becoming hundreds of thousands and then millions. Determined to act has put a stop to the grave danger that the Trump-Pence regime poses to the world by demanding that the whole regime to be removed from power. Now, with that being said, they are, you know, to me it sounds like they're not going to stop. This is the start and they're gearing up to go and go and go and just do it. Um, again, are they just going to protest peacefully until they're heard or are they actually going to be out there and causing a civil war scenario now i agree you guys have the right to peaceful protest however we've seen it time and time and time again that it's not very peaceful you guys are out in the streets you know protesting your thing but if you guys see someone you know that supports president trump or doesn't agree with the ideologies that you have it gets very violent the you know, you guys are disrupting traffic. Antifa is disrupting traffic. Black Lives Matter is disrupting traffic. That's not a peaceful protest. When you start disrupting the flow of the city, you know, you start getting in other people's way and stopping everyday activity from happening to try to prove a point, you're disrupting the community. That's not a peaceful protest. So the cops show up. Again, most of the time they're always there. They're just off in the cut making sure. But... Then you have some troublemakers that would like to go in and actually get in these cops' faces, spit, throw rocks. And next thing you know, they're, they're crying because, you know, the cops are shooting tear gas into their faces or something like that. You know, again, we have to look, you know, whenever we're seeing this at mainstream media, you know, of people getting pepper sprayed by cops, you got to find out what happened five minutes to that. You know, I've seen live feeds of protesting. You know, I've sat here for hours. You know, on my TV, I would cast them from my phone to my TV of these live feeds and watch them. And the police officers are there standing their ground. The only time that they move towards Antifa or make a movement is either if they're arresting someone. Arresting, I'm sorry. Because they are, you know, being agitated. You know, troublemakers. Actually get caught throwing something at the cops. Or even if the cop witnessed the, the agitator, you know beating up or causing vandalism to other people or property. Um, but yet, mainstream media and even there's there's reporters from the far left that go in there and they're live feeding and I've seen this firsthand. I was watching this guy's live feed. He was in, you know, he's, he's, he's part of a press. I can't remember what the fuck he, he represented, but he had one of those press badges. A young black gentleman. Um, and then he would go in and actually get in these cops' faces. They were making a lawful arrest to someone that was being an agitator and throwing rocks at him. Next thing you know, these people stormed these officers, screaming at them and all this other stuff. And he got maced. After the fact that they, they've been told five times to back up. You've been told five times to back up. Back up a little bit and still make your point. You don't need to be in someone's face like that when you're screaming. 
If you was to come in my face like that, I would assume that you're ready to cause harm. Within arm's length, anything goes. You've been told five times to back up. Again, police presence are going to be there. We know that Antifa, they're going to agitate the shit out of the police. Um, now, this is being state, or not statewide, again, I'm, I apologize, nationwide, you know, major cities. And I can guarantee you, the more activity you're going to see, the most activity you're going to see is in sanctuary cities. Chicago, um, mainly Chicago, and the other sanctuary cities around the nation. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know all of them off the top of my head. Um, so... Just want to let you guys know to be on the lookout for November 4th. If you guys live in a major city, you know, just keep an eye out. Listen, you know, use your ears. Listen. That was my furnace kicking on. And just, you know, use common sense. If, if there's anything going on, go the other way. Just don't pay them no mind. All right. Like I said, I see from the far right groups. You know, that I don't agree with as well, like the white supremacists. And even on Facebook, you know, people put and post out there, like if Antifa comes out November 4th and causes a civil war, what you going to do in there? There's like over 3,000 comments, you know, and people's like, well, it's hunting season and blah, blah, blah. Stop. Okay, that's not how we're going to fix this. And even if they do happen to succeed in their goal here, to overthrow Trump and Pence everyone thinks liberals think that America will go back to its normal self I don't see America its normal self I'm 32 years old guys with the traditions and values and ideology that I was raised about America that's gone that's that's gone we're not going to get that one back at all um, because even if they succeed you can guarantee you I can guarantee you the right's going to do the same thing you know, we're we're at a, a crumbling point. You know, people have asked me plenty of times, you know, well, what do we do to go fix this? I think that we are at a point to where it cannot be fixed. If you fix one thing, you're going to upset the other one and they're going to cause ha havoc. Um, you know, the only way that I really see, and I'm sorry, I really hate to say this. I love America. You guys, you guys that follow me and know me, you know, I'm an American citizen and I love it. But the only way that I see this ever getting better and back to basics of what it's about to be an American is the whole system has to crash at this point and start fresh. And that sucks. Um, because, even, like I said, if Antifa succeeds, you're going to have the right and the far right coming out. And next, you know, I mean, it's just going to be a vicious cycle. And then how far is Antifa going willing to go before they just say, you know what? It is what it is. He won the elections. Let's just support him. You know, he's only going to be with us for four, maybe eight years. That's a small fraction of your guys' lives, okay? Guys, I went through five or six, pre or four, five presidents, four of them. I'm sorry. Um, you know, again, I had the Bushes, I had the Clintons, I had the Bush Jr. and Obama administrations. You know, and I'm tired of those politics for the last 30 years of my life. To where I'm at today. Where we are as a society in America. Where we are today. Those are the politicians that we did not let come into office this time. They fucked us for the last 30 years, guys. We are here because of the old policies and the old crap that they were doing secretive. Okay? Look at Uranium One. That's being blown out there you know with the clinton foundation and russia and uranium and kickbacks and bribery and laundry and you know it's it's insane dirty politics has been in the office for at least the 30 years that i know i love the idea of america i you know but now that i see such a division you know it it, it really uh it, it sucks okay so that's, that's the Antifa aspect of it. Let's go ahead and hop over to another thing that's being talked about a little bit. It's not being put out mainstream only because there's a fear of panic. Um, and, all right, so any of you guys that follow alternative news or, you know, do your research, there's, there's a plan, and I find it, you know, and I'm not the only one that finds it... <laughs> A coincidence you know as if, if you should say you know but the Department of Defense here in America 
plans a solar storm based national blackout drill during the Antifa protest. Now, what does that mean? Are the lights all going to go out throughout the whole nation? I don't think the whole nation, it does say, you know, throughout the nation, I think it's going to be just in certain areas in the nation. And they're going to prepare. You know, there's been a lot of talk recently, you know, with North Korea with EMP attacks that would attack our electrical grid and pretty much put us at the Stone Age because we are so behind technology in that department that an EMP attack or a clonal mass ejection, a solar flare, and we do know that to be true. The a major colonial mass ejection happened in the 1800s. It totally wiped everything out, uh, put, the, put the world back in the darkness for a minute. Um, I can't remember what the the technical term was I should have went and did the research so I could bring it to you guys but most of you guys know what I'm talking about um so they're planning on doing a drill and it's going to affect landlines radios it's going to affect cell phones internet connectivity um let me go ahead and read read a little bit of this article again I'll post it in the description you guys can read it and this isn't being brought out mainstream, you know, it's not being talked about on television, per se, because of the idea of a nationwide panic. Can you imagine having a nationwide panic at the same time Antifa's out in the streets? I mean, it's, it's really a worst case scenario. So I really hope that the Department of Defense really got what they're about to do, if this is the case, really on lock. FEMA... You know, I mean, there's too many coincidences going on here. All right, so we all know that a kernel mass ejection is a big sunspot in the sun. It shoots out gamma rays and radiation and solar winds pick up and it attacks our magnetosphere. Um, that's what would cause, you know, earthquakes and stuff like that. But we also know that if there's one powerful enough could actually penetrate and it would destroy any kind of electronics. Um, same as an EMP, an electronic, uh, electric magnetic pulse. And it's being said that North Korea, you know, has the technology. They have these satellites up in space that orbit the United States, I believe, three or four times a day. And they're saying that these satellites are equipped with that technology that has yet to be seen. Um, but we also know that, you know, it's not uncommon, and especially nowadays. I'm sure someone has the technology to do this. But even if no one did have the technology, we have to worry about the sun. You know, the sun itself is its own destruction. Um, so they're going to actually run drills. And this drill is going to last for two days, November 4th, 5th, and 6th. Uh, the 4th through the 6th. And again, like I said, it's going to be disrupting radios and cell phones and landlines and internet. And I don't know if the actual electricity is going to go out. Like, we're going to be sitting in the dark for two days with no food, nothing like that. I don't think they're gonna do that. I think they're really going to focus on the communications part because if we lose power, if we lose the lights, it would still be a good idea to have radio contact. Um, so it's gonna be real hard, you know, if Antifa does do this, it's gonna be real hard, especially if the the Department of Just uh, Defense does this because again, they're gonna be putting a nationwide blackout on a lot of communications. You know, you're going to have agitators out in the street rioting and protesting and then beep, beep, I can't radio and back up or, you know, so they're, I'm sure that they have something in plan to, you know, balance that out. And I really hope they do, because if both these things happen at the same time and they really don't have their shit together, it could get really bad. Um, but this, this article basically talks about what they're, you know, I just pretty much summarized it. So I don't even really have to read it. I'll post the link in the article and you guys can, um read it yourselves but like i said i mean antifa november 4th department of defense november 4th it's weird it's weird guys so again november 4th if you guys live in major cities you know and you guys really believe the antifa rhetoric that's going on please be careful um i would like you know i would like to think that they're they're not but we've also seen that they've always made good on their threats and their you know promises so i can only imagine that they will be out november 4th and in big numbers again if you guys are in major cities be careful you know use common sense 
you know, listen and just, you know, have eyes on the back of your head, I guess, especially if you support Trump. Um, and then also don't freak out if you guys wake up November 4th and find out that your cell phones don't work. You can't get on the Internet. Again, that's really going to suck because there's going to be a lot of people that's not being affected by the Antifa movement that live in the suburban areas or the country and stuff like that. But still pay attention because then they, they turn to the internet, YouTube, Periscope, um, anywhere where you can get a live feed of a protest that's going on. You can get as if you're right there. You know, basically what I'm doing right here is if I was in the middle of a protest and I go live, Periscope would cover it. Facebook now has a live feed. Um, so a lot of people use the internet to get their news, you know, whether or not they, again, sub Sur uh, suburban areas, country, you know, out in the sticks. Um, again, there you're not going to have any cell phones, no internet, you know. So, again, if you guys wake up, if you guys are watching my video, and you guys wake up the 4th, don't freak out. I can only hope that this isn't going to happen. I, you know, again, it's not being mainstream. But the idea it's not being mainstream is because they're in fear of a nationwide uh, panic. Which makes sense. So, y'all just be careful November 4th. It could get very, very, very crazy. See you guys later.